Welcome to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast, your guide to future tech trends and innovation in a language you understand. Now, over to your host, Neil Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast, where I try to show you the future of tomorrow today. First of all, I want to send out a message to people listening to this podcast episode in the future. Those people that are listening three, five, ten years from now, looking back at our attitudes to technology and how things have changed. And for those people, it's currently August 2018, and there is both excitement and fear around artificial intelligence and automation and how it could remove a lot of traditional jobs. Many aspects of the media keep comparing the technology to fictional movies such as the Terminator movies and Skynet. However, one man is on a mission to show a different side of the coin and that this tech is not something to fear at all and it will actually unite us all and ultimately help us be more human after years of doing boring, mundane and repetitive tasks, sitting in the same desk, staring at the same screen, 9 till 5, every single day. I recently found evidence that this is already happening with a company called Automation Anywhere, and the fantastic work they're doing in dragging companies through the digital transformation and introducing new ways of working. So I invited their CEO onto the podcast today to talk about why he believes in a future where automation will actually free up employee time and allow them to focus on what people do best. And that's think beyond repetitive tasks, focus on being creative, and most importantly of all, of course, is to add value to the workplace. So buckle up and hold on tight as I beam your ears all the way to San Francisco so we can speak with the CEO of Automation Anywhere, where we're going to talk about how robotic process automation technologies are already transforming the workplace. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Sure. Uh, First of all, it's a pleasure to be talking to you, Neil. Uh, I'm Mihir Shukla, CEO of Automation Anywhere. Uh, Automation Anywhere is the one of the most cutting-edge software company in uh, uh, today. We make software bots. What software bots are is they think of them as digital colleagues. These are your digital colleagues that work side by side you and take away the repetitive, cumbersome task that you do. And that we, that's the business we are in. We have uh, nearly 600,000 of these software bots that that are working in the world today. Uh, We call them digital workers, and uh, they are growing rapidly, and they are helping uh, make work human again. So, uh, brief about us. And you guys have nearly two decades of experience in robotic process automation, which is often referred to as RPA technologies. But for anyone that's tuning in and hearing us talk about automation anywhere for the very first time, can you just set the scene a little and expand on what problems you solve? And also, what makes you guys unique from all the other companies out there? So if you think about how the work has evolved over the years, so today there is so much work that we do today that is, very repetitive. We would uh, we would look at one screen, take the data, and type in another screen. We would apply a set of basic rules, uh, and so much of all of our work is not as enjoyable. Um, what robotic process automation does is uh, it simulates uh, certain human behaviors. So it can read any screen, it can type on any screen, it can apply a set of rules. And it also has artificial intelligence components, so it can uh, apl- uh, do you, you know uh, basic intelligence work as well. What does that mean? Is that this R- with RPA bots, you can operate any application, any software application in the world. So uh, the kind of work that we uh, all of us don't enjoy doing, typing from one screen to another, processing invoices, purchase orders, claims, you know, all of that work, uh, a significant portion of that work could be now done with robotic process automation. There are a few ways our company is different. First of all, we are the pioneers of this idea of a digital workforce. and intelligent uh, bots. 
We com- our bots combine the power of artificial intelligence, analytics, and robotic process automation. So they are smarter bots. Because of that, they can automate three times more processes than many other uh, software bots out there. And often the return on our bots are six times more because we can automate end to end. One of the other way we are separate is that we are easiest to deploy and fastest to scale. Um, especially for large organizations, when they deploy 1,000, 10,000 or more bots, uh, that's a key criteria they, they, they look at. And the third is that uh, it is designed for, uh, for security and compliance in mind. Uh, for large, small, or medium enterprises. So it has built-in flexibility and securities that is required by uh, uh, enterprises all over the world. Uh, We also happen to be the largest player in this space uh, with over 1,100 customers. Uh, In so many industries, about 80% of the world's largest organizations are engaged with us. So these are the few ways uh, we we are uh, different than uh, any other solution out there. So when we talk about technology like this, I I get so tired, I'm sure you do too, about those same articles about artificial intelligence and robots with red eyes that are becoming self-aware, like fictional movies such as The Terminator. So can you share a different view of your future where automation is nothing to be feared but will actually free up employee time to focus on what people do best and think beyond repetitive tasks, be creative and actually get back to adding value to the workplace? Uh, You're so correct about the, you know, anytime we think of a robot, the image that uh, we we think of is is from Hollywood movies and this is the one place where Hollywood movies aren't of much help. Um, I think in reality the the world is very different. And instead of instead of painting the view of the future, let me tell you what's actually happening because that's happening now, right? And uh, so, so that it is it is a reality. Um, out of 1,100 customers, Neil, I must have walked on the floor of five to six hundred of them, and would have interacted with probably thousands of people who actually use these bots every day. People who were doing this work manually and now they are working side by side with the software bots. In that, Neil, there is not a single person who would go back to doing it manually. Not a single person. Nothing to do with the leader of that department making decisions. The actual worker would never go back. Because once you realize that this work that you hated so much doing now can happen this way, and you feel liberated. I have a story in mind. Uh, a few months back, I was sitting in, a, uh, with one of the, uh, in offices of one of the largest banks, and um, a young lady walks in, and she says, so the process has changed, and she has to change a bot, and it is the end of the month. So she was wondering what she, what, what, what she, she, uh, she should do. So the leader says, you know, just go back to doing it manually because you've been doing it for five years and um, we'll fix it tomorrow uh, or or two days later when the month ends. Life is sucked out of her face, Neil. She says, I cannot go back. The leader is surprised and says, but you did this for five years. Uh, Bot has only been there for six months. Why wouldn't you go back? She says, I I cannot do that again now. Now that I know this this happened, I cannot go back. Neil, you won't believe. She st- stayed back till midnight, fixed the bot, but she refuses to do it manually. And this phenomena, I see it every day with thousands of workers. The future is here. The, uh, this is happening. And the companies who deploy bots get three times more job applicants. Now, you would you'd say, why would that be? Imagine if you are 20, 30, 40 year old person with 20, 40, 30 or 20 years of productive career in front of you, what would you be rather doing? What, what, what builds your resume? Doing things manually in a mundane way or doing things the most, most cutting edge way? So you, you asked me to paint the picture of future. I think that future is here on the floors of thousands of companies. I see it in the eyes of the 
workers every day, and it's uh, it, that's uh, the 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 work that is more human is 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 the future. What a fantastic story, and it's so true there because I think there's going to be a lot of people listening to us now that are working in for companies that are doing the old way of doing things and manual processes and frustrated and want to be liberated from doing it that way. And so for that reason alone, I love your alternative view of the future where we work alongside machines rather than against them. And a future of bots in the workplace is actually nothing to be afraid of. So I'm curious, is there any uh, other stories that you can tell that will help listeners visualise how that future will look and how it's much closer than most people realise? I think the uh, I've, I've had countless examples. The, I'll give you one more example where there was a person in one of the insurance company who who, who tackles change of address, right? So uh, when when when, uh, when uh, there are millions of people moving every day, and uh, there are so many people involved in changing the address in various systems. I I don't think that's a human work. Uh, it was necessary to be done for a few years. So now with the bots doing that work, what people are doing is they're focusing on more intelligent part and say, if this many people moved from here, this kind of zip code to this kind of zip code, what does it mean? Right? What are the new needs customer has? What are the new products you can sell? It is that kind of work that is a lot more fulfilling. So that's, uh, and that's happening in, uh, across different functions. Take another example of uh, mortgages. So many of us, and including our listeners, many of them would have some experience uh, with mortgages. I have not met a single person who would say, yoo-hoo, I'm in the middle of the mortgage process. It's not an enjoyable process. Yeah. Right? Uh, you, you, go, you go to buy a $600 smartphone and you are excited. Yeah. You go to buy a quarter of a million dollar house and that process is painful. In what world is that a right thing? It's not a delightful experience. What, what banks are now doing is by using bots, they are changing that process. They are doing a 30 day manual process into 15 days. Then they are optimizing it even further, making it five days. And there are banks out there, Neil, that are working on a next day mortgage. I think that benefits everybody. Yeah, it's it's best for the consumer. I, the, the inefficiency and the painful process is doesn't help anyone. So the, unless you realize what all, uh, how much better things could be, you know, there, there is so much improvement possible. And we when we think about that, we, we realize that we have learned to live with inefficiencies, and we we don't need to. Yeah, I completely agree with you. If there is anybody listening to us that finds a notion of an intelligent digital workforce just that little bit intimidating, is there any way you can tell me how they can adjust and ensure that they thrive and survive in a digital future? Because I don't think technology is anything to be afraid of, but I just think we need to educate everyone to get everybody on board with this. I think two thoughts come to my mind, Neil. One is that you already have this you know, there's, inter- there's some kind of robots in your house. They are called dishwashers and microwave ovens, right? Uh, we are not afraid of them. In fact, we are delighted they are there to help us. If they can take over all the dishwashing with every intelligent way possible, all power to them. So they, that's one way to think about it, right? So I think we, we are often afraid of things we don't know. One thing to do is we have an idea, we have a, an Automation Anywhere University. Uh, you can find that at automationanywhereuniversity.com. On that, you can actually take a course to how to make a bot. And uh, these courses are available online and in uh, various training institutes. Often you can make a new bot within an hour. That's, the, that's how easy it is to, make, to use our software. I encourage anybody who's, who has any concern to make a bot. Once you know what it is, you will realize how much it can help you in your own life. And um, the, the facts and the truth and the power of it will, will take away the fear. And you guys are working in so many different exciting areas at the moment. I mean, for example, can you also tell me a little bit more about how you're working with platforms such as using Microsoft Dynamics for customer management? Because that sounds incredibly exciting too. Uh, Microsoft Dynamics is one of the areas where it is 
Very heavily used by many. Um, uh, quite a few examples there. Let me start with one. On a customer service side, so when somebody calls, uh, and we, we all have those experiences, when we make a call, uh, we are often waiting for a long wait time, and then it takes a long time to do the simplest things. One of the places where it is being used is with the help of Microsoft ch chatbots, they are able to understand some of the requests that you are making. Uh, once it figures out what you are trying to do, let's take an example. You want to change an address or you need the bills resend or uh, you know any of those requests. Once it understands what is that you are trying to do, they call our bots. And our bots go and uh, work with uh, many, many applications behind the scene and get the work done. So often by the time you put your phone down and if you check your email, the work is done. Uh, it is that instantaneous. That kind of a use case creates is is how how businesses should operate, how they would operate, and uh, uh, it is a, again a delightful experience for a customer. Another example is if you are uh, take an example of when you collect money or when you have to pay the money. On both sides, the processes involved are really cumbersome. There are mismatches. Sometimes it takes a long time to receive a money or to pay them, uh, pay the other person. Uh, creates uh, uh, heart burns at times, uh, depending on whether you are waiting to receive the money. All of those processes, when they are automated, creates a significant efficiency and significant free cash flow. If you are finance savvy, I'll give you one number. Uh, if you are a very large corporation and there is a term in finance called DSO, day sales outstanding. It's the time it takes you to collect money. When you reduce that day sales outstanding from 85 days to 81 days, it could create half a billion dollar in free cash flow if you're one of the large companies. So the impact is enormous on finance side or in a customer experience side. It really is, and right across the board as well. And I love what you're doing there by removing inefficiencies and not living with them. And you're helping businesses get ahead of their competitors, regardless of their size. And I love the story you said a few moments ago that even staff themselves, they don't, they don't want to look back. They don't want to go back to those manual processes, and they love what they've got now. But I'm curious, have you encountered any resistant to change and culture change and and you know, for those kind of people that resist change and look at automation negatively, how can they prepare to adapt and evolve with this inevitable technological change? Have you encountered any resistance like this? I, I think uh, we, we, we have some. Uh, I think change is hard for everyone, regardless of the nature of the change. Uh, what we normally find is, no matter what you are trying to do and how, how beneficial it is, you have to take everybody with you and help them understand what the change is about, why that change is necessary, and uh, the, the experience they have, how, how it can be leveraged to bring this change. Uh, normally we find, uh, uh, when we started this few years ago, about 40% of the people in organization would jump on it right away um, and say this is exciting. Other 40% will come along uh, because they see the benefit, right? They are skeptics in, initially, but when they see the benefit of it, they would come along. And then more and more people join. There are always some people, Neil, who, you, 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 you know, there are always 5% of the people who, no matter what you do, would not come along. But that's the, that's the nature of all change. I think the question, now the question people are asking is that it is no longer a choice. Because if you don't adopt this technology, some of the digital native companies who are, you know, the likes of Uber and Netflix and Airbnb and Amazons and Googles, yeah. they are doing this thing at a, such an efficient pace that just to survive, they have to do that um, to, to compete against these companies. So uh, I think the last two years, the narrative has changed in the market where uh, if you don't do it, you we, the, comp the companies cannot survive. So I've got to ask, I mean, what's your grand vision for automation anywhere? How do you see this evolving and indeed yourselves evolving with it? When we started about 15 years ago, our mission was to 
transform the nature of work and that hasn't fundamentally changed if anything we are we have gotten much closer to it i i think we the, 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 there are two ways we define our mission one is that by 2020 our bots would be producing 3 million people worth of work right? we'll have 3 million people worth of work being done by bots so in a manner of speaking we we are doing more work than the world's largest employer right? so what does that mean that means the definition of work itself should shift 100 years ago we were the definition of work was you dig a hole plant something that's no longer the definition of work for 98% of us now the definition of work for the most people in the office is type from one skin to another process rules apply rules and less intelligent work for many of them not for all of us but for many of them i think if we are successful in 10 years and i'm taking a uh, longer time frame it's always hard to predict how long it would take but in 10 years everything that can be automated should be automated and the definition of work itself has transformed to to more human work to more intelligent work to things that that are inherent to us as human beings i don't think typing from one screen to another or processing uh, invoices is a, is 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 a human work and if we can change the definition itself to a more fulfilling work that would be the goal i'm certain it will happen it 10 years 15 years we will we'll see how long it takes but it has started it is happening at a rapid pace and um, i think one more thought i think the new millennial generation coming to the workforce is also helping drive this change um as you know already there are more millennials workers than any other workforce this new 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 demographic has a different mindset they want careers they don't want jobs they want fulfilling work they they they, they are more savvy on a digital side so they are also pushing this change um, on a positive direction so um, th- there are multiple forces at p- play here uh, we are very hopeful the work will evolve to to the new definition they really are i was reading only a few days ago especially what uh, millennials what they're telling to do now as well they're taking their b2c expectations into the b2b world so in their personal lives they've got netflix on demand apple music spotify on demand uber even dates on tinder and flights and hotels all within a couple of swipes now they're now taking those expectations into the world of b2b first and saying well why can't we do this here so like you said there's a lot of forces at work here isn't there Yeah, it is. Yeah, just an, another example. I was in one of the Fortune 100 companies, and the, one of the millennials explained to me this way. He said that on a Facebook, I can catch up with a friend who I haven't interacted in 12 years. I can find him, sync up with it, see photos, talk to him, and in one hour, I'm caught up. It takes me three days to find my mainframe administrator in the organization, and he's probably sitting across the room. in in what world is that acceptable <laughs> uh, and so to to your point they are they, they are bringing b2c expectation in b2b and 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 they are right you know they in what it's not acceptable that's right what well, a huge thank you for coming on today if i do let you go could i just ask that you remind everyone listening where they can find you guys online and also maybe a contact to a member of your team if they have any questions about our conversation today sure Uh, the our website is uh, easy to remember automation anywhere one word uh, automation anywhere dot com um, we are the largest digital workforce robotic process automation software vendor and with a goal to make work human and um, we're very delighted to be talking to you now well I always say at the end of every episode that technology works better when it mm. brings people together. And contrary to popular belief, I truly believe that technology isn't dividing us, it's actually uniting us. So it makes so much sense to let the machines do the mundane work, the repetitive tasks, so we can as humans can get back to being creative, creating strategies, and most importantly of course, being human, and you've highlighted that perfectly today. So a big thank you for coming on. Of course. Thank you. It is it's time to it's time to bring robot out of the people and make work human. That's the message. 
like today's guest said, we're surrounded by robots already in our homes with microwaves, Alexa, voice-controlled lighting, smart freezers, or even smart toasters. We just don't see them that way. And it's millennials that are the huge driving force by bringing their expectations into the workplace now. The workplace is actually changing at breakneck speed, but for all the right reasons. And technology is actually liberating us from all those inefficiencies that previous generations just accepted. The repetitive and mundane tasks that have kept us shackled are all too familiar. But now it's time to spread our wings in the name of progress and humanity. I loved the story that today's guest mentioned a few moments ago. How the new system broke and was told to simply return to the manual way of doing things. And she simply refused. I can't go back to doing that. And it shows you just how far we've come. So are you excited or afraid of the future and what technology is going to bring to the workplace? As always, share your thoughts by emailing me at techblogwriter at outlook.com or tweeting me at Neil C. Hughes. I'm really looking forward to hearing what you guys have got to think of today's episode. And I really do hope you enjoyed our conversation about how technology can help us think beyond those repetitive tasks, be creative and be more human. So have a think and let me know what you thought of today's episode. But that's it for today, I'm afraid. I'll return tomorrow with another great guest. But until next time, don't be a stranger. Thanks for listening to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Until next time, remember, technology is best when it brings people together.